The Fermi Paradox. Part 14. Are we aliens? The idea that life may have arrived on Earth from space is known as panspermia, and it has a surprising and perplexing piece of evidence to support it. Our Earth is believed to have formed roughly 4.6 billion years ago, but for much of its earliest existence, it would have been completely hostile to life. With the young sun belching radiation into the seething planetary disk, composed of various protoplanets colliding and reforming, any incipient life would have been quickly annihilated. Our moon is believed to be the leftovers from a gigantic collision with a Mars-sized protoplanet that would have briefly reduced our planet to a ball of lava. Life on Earth wouldn't have had a stable environment in which to thrive until after the last great upheaval in our solar system's history, known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. Planetary scientists estimate that the Late Heavy Bombardment concluded roughly 4 billion years ago, but the earliest evidence for life on Earth may date back as far as 3.8 billion years ago. Just 200 million years later. 200 million years may not seem fleeting, but it is a passing season in geological time. 200 million years ago, mammals were already sharing the land with the earliest dinosaurs and conifer trees, and many everyday ocean species were already long established. But life, a chemical process so complex that its origin is still not understood, could have spontaneously emerged on Earth in such a short time is one of the great mysteries of natural history. But what if life didn't emerge on Earth? What if it had formed in some more ancient, hospitable place, and been brought by some mechanism to rest on our planet? The idea may seem preposterous, but recent discoveries of so-called extremophiles, single-celled life forms thought to be analogous to the earliest life on Earth, have shown that life is nowhere near as fragile or as delicate as once thought. Extremophiles have been found living happily without oxygen, or in highly acidic environments, or even in temperatures higher than the boiling point of water. Experiments with extremophiles have shown that it is at least possible that a meteorite containing dormant biotic spores could have been blasted off the surface of a planet by another impact, carried its cargo into space, and then delivered it safely to Earth, even through the hell of atmospheric re-entry and impact, provided the spores were buried deep in the meteorite's core. That such a phenomenon could have brought life to Earth from another star system, though, seems impossible. Assuming an average distance between stars of five light years, it would be the equivalent of aiming a gun blindfold and hitting a golf ball from two thirds the distance to the moon. To say nothing that such a journey would take at least billions of years to complete, a sizable portion of the age of the universe. But there exists another, far more plausible origin for any extraterrestrial life that may have been delivered to Earth, one that we know has delivered parts of itself to us in the past. Mars is smaller than Earth, which means it is, in a sense, older. It took less time to cool and would have been a relatively hospitable world when ours was still a bubbling mass of lava. We know that Mars once had a far more substantial atmosphere than it does now, which would have increased its surface temperatures to fairly tolerable levels, as well as abundant liquid water on its surface. Unlike today, it may even have had a magnetic field for some time, which would have protected any newly formed life from the harmful rays of the sun, as Earth's own field does for us. RNA, the chemical widely believed to have been the precursor to life, requires elements to form that would have dissolved on the early Earth, but are believed to have been abundant on the early Mars. Mars's lower gravity makes it easier for any materials torn from its surface to escape into space. The famous Allen Hills 84 meteorite, which may contain evidence of ancient Martian life, was launched in such a way, and is believed to have reached our planet in a scant 19 million years. We are a long way from showing one way or another if panspermia is real. A far more concrete path to resolving the Fermi Paradox is the discovery of extrasolar planets, and we will be exploring that discovery in the next episode.